I think that the freedom and openness of the web is really critical to its benefit to humanity and in a way to its survival as, the, as a tool with the value that we have now. Initially, this wasn't a question because the internet was built in a way that just connected any computer to any computer. It crossed the bound, national boundaries without worrying. There was no real connection of the internet to the concept of nation at all. So no matter com which country you were in, you could communicate with whatever website you wanted to. And it's that openness, that permissionless space, which has been really the fuel for this huge explosion of creativity and new businesses and that, that's really driven the web to where it is now. But also it's not just driven new businesses and, you know, the, the, uh, and new creativity out there. Also, of course, now we use the internet in very intimate ways. So the, the web has crept into our lives being the first place we go when we're worried about whether we might have a disease or whether our friend has a disease. It's the where, place that we have com very intimate conversations with family members and loved ones that are, that are too far away to talk to physically. So suddenly the web also is a medium for our very, very intimate personal lives. So it becomes critical that we should be able to use it for these things without being limited and with also without repercussions without being spied on. If I'm worried that a friend of mine might have, a, might have a, a cancer, I want to be able to go on the web, move the mouse, click on that link, follow up, do the research, find out what it's like to have that cancer, find out what sort of treatment it gets, really understand the disease without thinking that somebody's looking over my shoulder, somebody's going to be checking, the machine is going to be monitoring the fact that I'm interested in cancer and maybe in future change, uh, stop me getting health insurance or increase my health insurance premium or start sending me advertising about uh, cancer treatments. So that's just ability to use the web to communicate with whoever I want without feeling that I'm being spied on and, and without being blocked as well. Some of the horror scenarios that people have thought of is that I, you know, I, I want to go to uh, find which drug w I, I should recommend to my friend and I go to one website uh, and it's blocked because there's another website has a deal with my internet service provider that they should only sell, that they should only really let me go to one of the competing co drug companies. So that's, that sort of horror scenario is that you don't have access to the whole internet. You only get the, a, one that's been cooked up by some large company that is controlling it or a large government. So there's always been the history of the web Every now and again, uh, there's been a danger that this fails, that this openness to use the internet fails. There's been a time when uh, in Holland, an internet service provider started slowing down the traffic for Skype because they didn't want, they thought that Skype competed with its telephone service. They wanted to promote the telephone service, so they started blocking Skype. So quickly, the Dutch government immediately said, no, that's illegal, you must be open. We must keep the competition open. We must keep the commercial competition open. Similarly, of course, there are a lot of countries where there are the countries where you go to and you can't get Google, you can't get YouTube, you can't get Twitter because the government feels that they are too open a platform and, the, and this is a government which isn't strong enough to allow that openness of discussion with the country. So there's censorship, but also perhaps more insidious and, uh, and in a way uh, nastier than the censorship of the countries where the government allows you to go to a site where you learn about the opposition party and it monitors you and then it finds out who all your friends are and then it rounds them all up in the middle of the night and puts you all in jail. The power nowadays with very powerful computers that you can put into the internet to spy on it, there, it's possible for a large company or a large government or a combination often of the two, in fact, to abuse the, the right, the, these, these what we're now thinking of as uh, really being more along the lines of human rights to 
communicate with who we want to, to be able to buy and sell with whoever we want to, and to be able to have an intimate communication with our, whoever we want to without repercussions. So yes, openness, they're not just uh, a nice thing to have. They are essential for the open market. They're essential for groups and families and individuals, and they are essential as a basis for democracy.